So the name of the platform under which you are fighting to free yourself, for me, does not matter. Otherwise, Dr. Vesige and those with whom they went to Luero would have returned here as Uganda Patriotic Movement, but they returned as NRA. There are people who are sentimental about this, and I know now I am scratching your wound. When you think about the journey the Honorable Sarah Musumba has spoken about of 20 years, there are those who can't let the FDC go. They would rather go and get buried with it. Please count me out, and I want to apologize to you. I want to be and spend the rest of my career fighting to rescue Uganda, not fighting to rescue Nigeria and Kobe. Those who are there are crying, so I go and train them and we do what? <laughs> So we started here protesting as action for change, FOC. Midway Museum took over FOC. We became for God and my country. And we are willing to continue changing names because for me the name does not matter. Please, those of you who are sentimental about FDC and you don't, you, you don't imagine yourself doing politics, the circumstances may force you to call yourself a different name. Museum is your name, During the way he was cursing. I don't know how many other names he has had. <laughs> Mediate upon assuming office, we extracted the aforesaid resolutions of the delegates' conference and submitted or registered the same with the electoral commission as required under the law, with the demand that the record should capture the true position of the party. Unfortunately, and characteristic of the commission, up to now, they are yet to respond to our communication. The same resolutions were forwarded to the banks, our banks, where we have accounts, but still no positive response is delivered to us. The investors continue to receive statutory funds from the electoral commission and spend the same illegally with the electoral suburb, and they are not accounting to members. It is also a fact that, regrettably, some of our members have chosen to acquire new addresses and continue with their journey under new banners. Unfortunately, that shouldn't have been a unilateral decision in a group. In the, the journey we have walked, we have traveled. You need to sit, we need to sit together, agree, and move as a team. to welcome you all to Katonga, the home of struggle. I wish to appreciate you all for finding time amid your very busy schedules. We are definitely alive to all the hardships you have encountered along the way and also endured all through the protracted struggle. We salute you and encourage you to persevere and hold the force. I thank you very members. And thank you very much, colleagues. This year, 2024, as observed by the Honorable Salam Masuba here, marks two decades of the existence of the Forum for Democratic Change Party, having been birthed on the 16th day of December 2004, following the historic decision at Bonita Gardens on the 7th day of August 2024, where three formations to it, the former agenda, Parliamentary Advocacy Forum, National Democratic Forum, agreed to formally march and midwife the club FDC we see today. However, I note with a heavy heart and concern that this mighty institution that has grown by leaps and bounds over the years and weathered all kinds of storm as a vanguard of democratic governance, civil liberties and social justice has of recent first serious existential threats orchestrated by the junta in collusion with their proxies currently hold up at Nagyanangun. As we said, FDC, it's incumbent upon us, all the bona fide members of the party, and the well-wishers to galvanize, summon, and direct all our energies towards achieving the mission and ideals of the FDC for which our forefathers, comrades, and many members have painstakingly sacrificed 
with the sum paying the ultimate price. It's on that premise that the delegates who assembled at an extraordinary national delegates conference that convened at this very place where we are today on the 19th of September 2003 took a bold step to stave off a coup against the party constitution that had been orchestrated and masterminded by a handful of individuals who were unfortunately either two at the helm of the party leadership. I speak with the confidence that the 19th September day 2000, no, I speak with the confidence that the 19th September 2023 day will remain in the annals of our party as a very significant day where guarantee members of the party took a commendable decision of warding off the evil maneuvers of the junta that had crept, not wrapped, I'm sorry, that had crept into the nerve center of the mighty FDC. Those who have a text, you can correct that. That had crept into the mighty FDC. You took a bold step, and we need to pat each other at the back. That decision is a laudable. It's a laudable decision. The post, I mean, posterity will appreciate it. For the record, that delegates braved and defied all monstrous obstacles or hostile environment, brutality, tear gas, mayhem, and marauding face guns, amongst others, and unanimously made the following resolutions. One, extension of the FDC party leadership by six months from 8th October to 2023. You recall the extended leadership was to expire on that day of 8th October, or they about 2023. And when members assembled here, they said that leadership is extended for six months. Two, the resolution put in, the second resolution to put in place an interim electoral commission to organize free, fair, transparent, and credible internal party elections. The commission comprised of Honorable Michael Mike Kavazguruka as the Chief Electoral Commissioner and the three other members to wit, Honorable Jaka Wamai Wamanga, Dr. Elizabeth Chwarage, Dr. Oh no, Mr. Bonne Ogongson. Three, the third resolution, rather, the delegates conference duty to the delegates and the entire membership of the party for the trust they put in my team to steer the party during this interim period. I would like to express that gratitude to you, colleagues. I, however, hasten to add that during this tumultuous period, it has been a roller coaster journey characterized by malicious propaganda, sabotage by our detractors, and logistical challenges, among other things. The challenge is not with standing. It is a constitutional obligation and a call for all of us to continue with the struggle with the grit, with the resilience, with the fortitude. I wish on this note to appreciate our founding president, Dr. Chiza Vesike, and our heredah, and our heredah, who happens to be in exile, the Honorable Chapa Karuhanga, for providing us with a home and a command post where we are gathered today and all other forms of support in innumerable ways. We are more than gratified, Colonel Dr. Chizaveske and the entire team. Similar gratitude is extended to you all members for the invaluable support and the sacrifices made in various ways, in many ways that I cannot explain here. You are all, even being here, you are sacrificing. On a daily basis, you are sacrificing. Kudos, colleagues. At this juncture, members, Permit me to present to you a synopsis of the activities and actions taken in execution of the mandate entrusted to us. Number one, suspension and disciplinary action. Immediately upon assuming office, we extracted the aforesaid resolutions of the delegates' conference and submitted or registered the same with the electoral commission as required under the law. 
with the demand that the record should capture the true position of the party. Unfortunately, and characteristic of the Commission, up to now, they are yet to respond to our communication. The same resolutions were forwarded to the banks, our banks, where we have accounts, but still no positive response is delivered to us. The investors continue to receive statutory funds from the electoral commission and spend the same illegally with the reckless abandon. And they are not accounting to members. Our efforts to pursue the disciplinary committee or processes have been a bit thwarted by a number of impediments, details of which shall be shared with you in due course. Before going not with this standing, the position remains that those leaders are still under suspension no matter the posturing and the grandstanding. Have you heard that? Yeah. They remain on suspension. I'm glad to report to you that all bona fide and well-intentioned members, countrywide and in the diaspora, oh, yes, have roundly rejected them and they are left with no iota of credibility. <laughs> Litigation. Members, as you are aware, the imposters had engineered the machinations to try to secure a court order from, not for, from Lady Justice Esther Nambayo to forestall the 19th September Extraordinary Delegates Conference, but all in vain. The purported court order was never extended. There was an interim order which was never extended and did not serve to, on the chairman here and it lapsed on, nine, on 18th September, on the eve of our delegates conference. Their matter was extended to 4th October. We don't know what happened to the same. Therefore, our delegates conference was lawfully convened and the resolutions thereof are still binding and have never been challenged in any courts of law. They are binding. <laughs> we also proceeded to file a civil suit in the High Court number 387 of 2023, Ambassador Washawirigwa and 27 others versus Boniface Tetelebuka Bamwenda, challenging the processes that were being undertaken to hold the Delegates Conference at Ipatida Samuji Rugogo on the 16th day of October 2023 under the rubrics of the Tetelebuka Bamwenda Commission. We specifically sought for a permanent injunction restraining the imposters, their agents, servants, and all employees acting under them from A, holding the office of the Chief Electoral Commissioner of FDC without the express mandate of the National Delegates Conference, that is the Honorable Tetele Pukapamuenda, to an injunction also restraining them from holding or presiding over the internal elections for the leadership of the structures of the FDC. Three, restraining them from convening their nefarious conduct and scandals which include the coup they are perpetrating because they are continuing to commit treason against the party. The chaos and mayhem they have caused at Najana Kumbi, including bringing Gugunis to take it up as a garrison and apologize for the public odium they have invited to the party. They have subjected us to public odium. So they should apologize for the same. They must stop holding out as leaders of the party and forget the general court. If they are to be retained as a member of the party, they have to go through some cleansing exercise. <laughs> and exercising the ghost which is haunting us now. Three. Even protracted struggle. It's only human that some people get fatigued. Therefore, there is a section of members who have moved a proposal, a rather novel proposal, that since the vision, heart, and soul of members of the party reside here at Katonga, the bona fide members who are still committed to the struggle to push back against the junta should consider getting a new brand and move on with the vision of building a new Uganda with the new institutions. Hey, I told you please, these are different permutations for your consideration, not for applause. This would essentially entail having a new political 
formation. No holds bad. I present it as is. And these are the views we have gathered as NECA members from all of you, and we sum them up for your consideration. Four, they are members of political parties under a military junta. And they are advancing a rather radical proposal that we establish a social movement akin to the reform agenda. Advance the struggle to its logical conclusion, and the members will have a party belonging once we establish a constitutionally functional state structure. There are those who have that view. Is it well understood? The final one, number five, it is also a fact that, regrettably, some of our members have chosen to acquire new addresses and continue with their journey under new banners. Unfortunately, that shouldn't have been a unilateral decision in a group. In the, the journey we have walked, we have traveled, you need to sit, to, we need to sit together, agree and move as a team. In the premises, I hereby invite you honorable members to have a candid and frank deliberation about their four side permutations with a view of generating a consensus on the most appropriate and viable course of action that will enable us march in a single file with fortitude until we reach the promised land for God and my country. One people, one the, I want to interest you, there is information that cannot be hidden. We borrowed money from World Bank during the COVID period. Part of that money was spent on buying vaccines. We now as a country have vaccines that have expired worth 300 billion shilling. Part of the money we borrowed from the World Bank. We are now waiting for the money from Gavi, which is meant to finance other health care to destroy the expired vaccines. You need to interest yourself in the report of the Auditor General. Uganda now has a debt close to 100 trillion that we need to pay. But you can see those who are leading the country, the way they are enjoying I recently published some, I'm not sure they were all, the list of Museveni's convoy of 70 vehicles. The wife has another set, the son has. They also have vehicles for households to bring them tomato and onions. Yet there are no ambulances in public facilities. So the struggle we are involved in it's not just a struggle to go and uh, rescue Najana Nkombi. And if we did, then we should throw a party and celebrate that now we have taken over Najana Nkombi. That's not our struggle. The struggle we're involved in is to rescue Uganda. <laughs> Dr. Mesje and his colleagues who went to Luero at the time of departure from Uganda to go to Luero to fight, they were Uganda Patriotic Movement, UPM. He knows when they became NRA. So the name of the platform under which you are fighting to free yourself, for me, does not matter. Otherwise, Dr. Vesje and those with whom they went to Luero would have returned here as Uganda Patriotic Movement, but they returned as NRA. 
there are people who are sentimental about this, and I know now I am scratching your own. When you think about the journey, the Honorable Sarah Musumba has spoken about of 20 years, there are those who can't let the FDC go. They would rather go and get buried with it. Please count me out, and I want to apologize to you. I want to be and spend the rest of my career fighting to rescue Uganda, not fighting to rescue Najana and Kumi. Those who are there are crying, so I go and gain them and we do what? <laughs> We should not be able to like NRM people. The other day they were lined up like children to go and shake hands and take photos with Museveni and son. Then in the corridors of parliament they are crying. I said, you know what to Joseph and Nani? Do you know what they have done to us? So I want to invite uh, members of the council and all the FDC where you are. Dr. Wes here, 2011, when we went on the street to protest during the walk to work. We started as A4C. <laughs> so we started here protesting as action for change, A4C. Midway we took over A4C. We became for God and my country. And we are willing to continue changing names because for me the name does not matter. Please, those of you who are sentimental about FDC and you don't, you, you don't imagine yourself doing politics, the circumstances may force you to call yourself a different name. Museven is your Museven Tibuhavulwa. During the world, he was Kasim. I don't know how many other names he has had. <laughs> <laughs> so the obsession, I see it among our colleagues here. And I'm just inviting you. And that serves also to, to tell you we are in this together. I received many phone calls. People, are you now leaving us? So, I, so when I leave you, I go and do what? So we're in this together. That's why even with FDC, you will see Dr. SJ speaking and trying to all the forces that are fighting for freedom. Because even with FDC, it is not enough. So I want to assure you we are in it together. We'll walk the journey together until our country is rescued. <laughs> Maybe I should also tell colleagues who are in the media, because they keep asking me now, where are you going next? I am fighting for Uganda, I'm going nowhere. <laughs> I am still here and I will join hands with everybody, with anyone who wants to fight for Uganda. I think that. Uh, answers the, those of you who have been calling me. So in Parliament, that's the struggle we are involved in. Every day you discover they have stolen this, as you are chasing them, you, meet, you find they have stolen something else. And I don't think they are about to stop. And I want to thank my colleagues who have been uh, steady, colleagues who are here. You see, Parliament can be very difficult. At the level of the Parliament, you think someone is empowered. Today is with you, tomorrow is calling you from home. I am with you, but I am unable to come and uh, be with you in the public. <laughs> that is unable <laughs> Please don't worry, we are still together. But that together he wants to associate with you in hiding. So those of you who are here, don't think that you are liberating only yourselves. Even if people at the parliamentary level need to be liberated. <laughs> So I want to thank you very much. Um, that's what we are involved at, uh, in Parliament. We will continue fight. And please, we want to assure you, we are in this together, we will work together, and one day Uganda will be free. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable And many didn't think we'll be here today. But right here we are. Alive and well. Now. You are too well. Now, I introduce myself. I am. Uh, what am I? Ambassador was for the your party chairman for the last eight years, and I have enjoyed every bit of it, including climbing walls. <laughs> yes, last time we met here. 
I had to come in in this special way. They thought was, they would stop us. They deployed hundreds of soldiers, policemen, plus 250 kifefe, kifes. But they could not handle the boy from Katwe. <laughs> oh yeah, raise here and I hope I die here. It's like me coming to your home. You know the panniers, didn't you? Not your panniers, didn't you? I, uh... Now, our program today, I have a lot to say, but definitely we don't have enough time and we wish, we want you to go early enough so that you get home in time. So the program, we have already gone through a lot and we have finished the roll call of anthems, prayers, and option of the agenda now. Following the resolutions of the Extraordinary National Delegate Conference that was held here on 19 September 2023 at Katonga, the country will recall the attack on a meeting which was duly called by me. And then the powers vested in the party chairman by the party constitution. In successfully holding the Extraordinary National Delegate Conference to plot to accept the constitutional powers of the office of the FDC chair were foiled. The plot to capture the party were equally exposed. It is because of all our concerned efforts to rescue the soul of the Forum for Democracy Chain that we are gathered here today. I indeed congratulate you, congratulate you all. We have not abandoned the mission for which the FDC was formed. As we gather here today, it is important to remind ourselves of our history and our mission so as to calibrate our future. Hon Salam Musumba, as a founder member, will provide us that 20 years journey. This council meeting, we receive reports and updates from the leaders on the mandate we have exercised following the resolutions of the Extraordinary National Delegate Conference. The Council will also provide insights on the way forward. I wish to acknowledge and appreciate the enduring resilience of the change seekers countrywide. Unfortunately, we continue to lose some. I am inviting us to observe a minute of silence to honor those that we have recently lost, including Mr. Adam Murana, Honor Cecilia Ogwao, Mosea.